Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today is all about crossfades in Studio One, what they are, how you can use them, and also a couple of tricks that you might not know yet, even if you consider yourself a crossfade expert. Let's check it out. Let's cover the basics first. What are crossfades? Well, crossfades are transitions between two events that allow you to blend them into each other seamlessly. Without crossfades, transitions between two events can often sound quite abrupt and unexpected. Here's an example with two events that don't have a crossfade. And here are the exact same events with a crossfade. So as you can tell already, crossfades can be pretty useful. Let's take a look at how to set them up. From my experience, the easiest way to work with crossfades is without the tracklist option, no overlap when editing events. Click on this wrench icon here and make sure that's disabled before you start working with crossfades. That keeps everything nice and hassle free. And once you've done so, you can just resize these events over each other and you see this gray area appearing because of the overlap. Now that is the duration of your crossfade. Once you're happy with the duration of the transition, you hit X and now you get a seamless transition from the first event to the second one. You can also make that fade more logarithmic, meaning that it's um, more steep or you can make it more exponential. And you can also build really complex fades because you're able to set the fade in and the fade out curves independently from each other. To do that, grab on this handle here and then hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows and see how I can now adjust the bend of the curve from the fade in independently from the fade out. So that is really, really cool. You can also locate the cursor right here in the middle of your crossfade and you see this little X appearing and that indicates that you can now move the crossfade around. And you can also see in the waveform preview here how that affects the transition. You can also just shorten the crossfade like so. Simply drag here on the event boundaries and with a little bit of practice, you're gonna make awesome sounding fades in no time. One thing that I do want to mention very briefly is that you do not need crossfades if you just want to get rid of, say, a couple of clicks and pops at the beginning and the end of your events. Like for example here, I have a percussion loop that has a bit too much of a click due to the transients not being split accurately. But here I don't really have to fade anything into each other. I really just have to set the fade in and fade out points of the transients. And for that, we have our own dedicated keyboard shortcut, which is Shift plus X instead of X. This creates auto fades and um, is an incredible tool. So I just wanted to mention that in case you weren't aware of that. So this covers the basics of crossfading. Most of you are probably familiar with the concept already, but now I want to share three crossfade tricks with you that you might not be aware of yet. Here's number one. Contrary to many other DAWs that I've used, it is possible in Studio One to adjust the crossfades of events at the same time. So you just make a selection and then you just start moving your crossfade and as you can see, those changes are reflected across all of the events. This is something that's not possible in every DAW, so I thought it was worth pointing out because many users wouldn't even try it out thinking that it wouldn't work anyway. The second trick I gotta share with you guys is very easy to miss, even for power users, because it's a keyboard shortcut that has been added fairly recently and it's remove crossfades. Before it was quite tedious to get rid of these crossfades again, but since Studio One version five, we fortunately have a keyboard shortcut for that that makes our life much easier. So go to Studio One, keyboard shortcuts, and search for remove crossfades. You can assign that to any keyboard shortcut that you can memorize well. I use uh, Shift, Command and X in my case, and now I can just make a selection, hit that shortcut, and all of the crossfades are gone. This used to be a bit of a hassle in version four and prior, so if you didn't know about this trick yet, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And for the third and final trick, 
crossfade hack, if you will, we're going to go to the macro organizer where we can build our own crossfade with our own set length. To do that, go to Studio One, Macro Organizer, and click on New. And here you want to search for the following command, crossfade, create crossfade. Just like the one that you have assigned to the letter X on your keyboard by default, but the difference being that you can now also specify certain parameters that you can then trigger from the same keyboard shortcut. So if you want that your crossfades have a certain length, like let's say five seconds or 10 seconds every time you add them, this is a fantastic method to get that done. So we double click create crossfades to add it to a new macro. And now we can double click it again because we have these arguments here that we can specify length, type and bend. And whatever we enter here is going to be fired off essentially as soon as we launch this macro from a keyboard shortcut or MIDI controller or things like that. So double click create crossfades and for length, you just enter the value that you want in seconds. So if you want to have a 10 second crossfade, then you would just enter the value 10. If you want to have five seconds, maybe let's go with five seconds for now. You just enter five. For type, you can enter either exponential, logarithmic or linear. So in my case, I'm just going to go with linear. If you don't specify anything, it's going to be linear anyway. Um, and for bend, you can choose a bunch of values. I think the values one to three make the most sense, but you have to experiment with that a little bit if you want to get it accurate. My recommendation would be to just start with length. We click on OK now and we just give that a name. Call that, for example, create five second crossfade. So we know exactly what that is. Hit OK. And now in Studio One keyboard shortcuts, we can assign this brand new macro. Okay, so we just search crossfade. There it is, create five seconds crossfade. Maybe let's add that to a keyboard combination that involves the key five, makes it easier to memorize. I'm gonna go with control, command and five in my case. I have so many keyboard shortcuts already assigned that I have to get a bit more creative with my keyboard combinations. Hit apply and okay. And now as soon as I add a crossfade, it will have the length of five seconds. So I hope that I was able to tell you something new about crossfades in Studio One today. And thank you for watching.